Super Mario is the new Mickey Mouse. <laughs> But even though he's now a movie star, his origins are still in video games. And you surely missed out on a ton of hidden details and references to his fellow professionals in the Super Mario Bros. movie. Start this journey with us by hitting the like button, subscribing to our channel, and turning on notifications. And now, we're gonna tell you 15 hidden details from the Super Mario Bros. movie about video games. At the beginning of the movie, there's a reference to one of the most legendary games in video game history. Do you remember a certain laser gun that fired if you pointed it at the TV? Well, the duck that you had to hit and its scenery appear in the paintings of the pizzeria where Mario and Luigi are. And if you happen to like modern art, you might have noticed that the huge painting in the rich lady's house is a sketch of the Duck Hunt dog. In the game, it appeared holding the duck when we hit it. They love dogs in this house. But for classics, the first time in which Mario faced Donkey Kong, although at the time Mario was known as Jumpman. In the pizzeria, there's an arcade machine with a 1981 Donkey Kong game, and you can read Jumpman on the front of the machine. Interestingly, the structure where Mario and Donkey Kong battle in the Mushroom Kingdom is an homage to the scaffolding in this minigame. Although, of course, it couldn't be called Donkey Kong in the movie because then it would cause a space-time paradox that would destroy the universe. And we're not leaving the pizzeria yet, because the photo wall is full of history. In one of them, we can see the protagonists of the Punch-Out saga, Little Mac and Doc Lewis, who lived in the Bronx near Brooklyn, and whose game was released on the original Nintendo in 1987. And if you didn't notice this detail, you definitely saw the pizzeria itself is called, directly, Punch-Out, a tribute to the game. Now this one might be the most hidden detail in the entire Super Mario Bros. movie, and only true Nintendo fans will have been able to figure it out. So while the news shows a flood in downtown Brooklyn, the subtitles at the bottom warn that scientists have identified mysterious signals coming from Galaxy FS-176. At first it may not mean anything to you, but it is the name of the system where the events of the Metroid saga take place. Where, for example, the planet Zebes is located, there is also a mention of a famous Nintendo 64 game, Wave Race. After the discovery of Galaxy FS-176, it can be read that R. Hayami won the Wave Race Championship despite the odds, a reference to the character Ryota Hayami, one of the most balanced watercraft pilots in the game. Donkey Kong may be a secondary character, but his universe has perfectly blended with Mario's. The bongos that are playing in the stadium are identical to the Nintendo GameCube controllers for the Donkey Kong Saga, a guitar hero bought with bongos. Among the audience of the Great Battle, you can see characters that appeared in the Country Saga, like Diddy, Dixie, or Chunky Kong, whom we also saw in Donkey Kong 64 for Nintendo 64. Also, the engines that the apes' cars have are the same ones that appear in games like Donkey Kong Bear Barrel Blast. So of course it was clear we're not going to be finding Mario playing with a PlayStation, although we didn't know that this character would be such a fan of Nintendo consoles. In his room, we can see him playing with an original Nintendo from 1983. When Luigi is called, his ringtone is the GameCube startup sound. And a Mi also appears on the phone as an unknown number. These avatars could be created on the Mi to resemble real players. Peach says that there are a lot of galaxies out there, and in one of them is Star Fox, the space fox from Nintendo that Super Mario is a super fan of. So much so that he has a replica of the R-Wing on top of his bedroom TV, the ship that Fox pilots in the Star Fox games. Foreman Spike is one of the lesser-known characters in the Super Mario universe, perhaps because he's also one of the oldest. On his uniform, you can read that he belongs to the Wrecking Crew Company, which is the same name as the original Nintendo game in 1985. Mario previously worked for Spike, but over time he went his own way with his brother and created their plumbing company called Super Mario Brothers, now competing with Spike and Wrecking Crew. And what was Super Mario playing while he was feeling down in his room? Kid Icarus, one of the original Nintendo games from 1986 starring the Angel Pit. The choice of this game is not a coincidence. Instead of displaying Game Over when the game ends, Kid Icarus displays I'm Finished, referring to Mario's 
disastrous work situation and how his future doesn't look particularly bright. But we can go even further back to the beginnings of Nintendo in video games with Game & Watch and Disc Hunt. While Mario and Luigi are walking through a construction site, we can see a construction company that uses the symbolism of the Game & Watch video game series created in 1980. The characters are both on a truck and on a construction sign. Although the workers are not black silhouettes with eyes, Disc Hunt is a mascot of the Famicom Disk System, a Nintendo console that was only available in Japan, and its games were floppy disks. It appears in the movie as the name of a computer store in Brooklyn. Nintendo always insists on putting Pikmin everywhere because, while well, they're so small, they can be everywhere. In the Super Mario Bros. movie, they are also hidden, specifically in the rich lady's house where Mario and Luigi go to fix the bathroom. Just when the dog falls out the window and is miraculously saved by the plumbers, a scene appears in the living room where we can see a glass statue in the shape of a Pikmin. At the same time, it could be a reference to the Ice Pikmin that appeared in the latest game in the series for Nintendo Switch, Pikmin 4. There are even more ice things in the Super Mario Bros. movie, like the Blizzard Pop Ice Cream Shop in Brooklyn, which has the bear from the 1984 Nintendo game Ice Climbers as its logo. Super Mario must be a big fan of these ice creams, because he also has a poster of the game's enemy bear with the pink pants that make it so recognizable in his room. Mario liked driving, and we knew that before we drove the cart on Rainbow Road. If you look closely at the detail in his room, you'll see that among his hobbies was high-speed driving with vehicles from the F-Zero Saga. This more recent Nintendo game was released in 1990 on the Super Nintendo. In the poster, we can see the Blue Falcon, the ship that Captain Falcon pilots in the F-Zero games and also uses a weapon in his final smash in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. When Mario suddenly returns to Brooklyn, we can see that there is a car wash in the city with a sign of a character floating with balloons. It's the protagonist of the Balloon Fight game, which was released on the original Nintendo in 1984 and whose programmer was the late Nintendo president, Satoru Iwata. Sadly, he passed away prematurely after being diagnosed with cancer, but his creation, Balloon Fight, remains very present today as a constant tribute in Nintendo. Back in Super Mario's room, we can see many posters and references to various NES sports games. So we got a poster of Kung Fu Master, a kind of street fighter bomb with Kung Fu. There's also another featuring Amazon and Starman, two fighters from the pro wrestling video game, a tennis racket that refers to tennis, and a baseball poster that nods to the NES baseball game. In the conceptual art of this same room, Nintendo thought about including more references like the Excite Bike calendar, the motorcycle racing and stunts game for NES, or some something completely unrelated like a poster of the Beastie Boys, a hip-hop band from Brooklyn. We return to the evil dog's house, but in this case, we're gonna take a look at its conceptual art. Lacking references to the Legend of Zelda series, it seemed that Nintendo planned to place a statue of the goddess, which appears in Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, on one of the shelves. Honestly, we would have loved for this to become a reality. If, like Super Mario, you also love video games, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out the rest of our videos of facts and secrets right here. See you next time!